for prayer and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. I would now like to invite our friendly campus minister to the stage, Ms. Stacia Bolakowski, to lead us in our opening prayer. Gentlemen in the graduating class, I invite you to remove your caps for prayer. Let us begin under the sign of our salvation in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Spirit of life, creator, source of boundless compassion, we thank you for this day and for the wisdom to recognize our gifts and serve you with gratitude. Bless these graduates of the Bishop Knoll class of 2021 as they pursue their dreams in unexpected ways. Provide them with the courage to move beyond fear and doubt during these uncertain times, to find strength in their capability to care for others, and to respect the full diversity of humankind. Help them to be mindful that true success is born of meaningful relationships and a community that embraces peace and justice for all. Through your gracious spirit, we ask that you bless them with patience as they explore new horizons. Bless them with humility in the face of success and abundance. Bless them with compassion for the poor, the sick, and the suffering. Bless them with generosity in the midst of those challenges to come. Bless them with gratitude for friends, mentors, and family who have supported them through this journey. And bless us all, family, friends, faculty, mentors, and supporters, as we share in the joy of their accomplishments. We ask all of these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. You may be seated. Good evening, Dr. Joseph Makrovich, President Paul Mullaney, faculty watching virtually, staff, parents, families, and class of 2021. You can get excited. There ain't a lot of us. <laughs> It is with great honor that I preside over tonight's 98th commencement. This past year, I asked Mr. Cavazos and my administrative team to forfeit their summer to prepare our building to operate during a global pandemic. 
These individuals gave of themselves countless hours to prepare our building and to prepare our teachers to open. On August 12th, I asked my teachers to do the impossible, to operate two classrooms in person and one virtually, all at the same time. To my admin team and my teachers, thank you for your sincere support this school year. It was not easy, but I am thankful to say that we opened up our building on August 12th to 465 students. We offered in-person in -person learning and virtual learning and everything else in between. This feat could not have been accomplished without the energies and efforts of our staff and teachers for the past 180 days. To my teachers, admin team, and staff, thank you so much. In addition to my staff, I want to give my sincerest thanks to the Bishop Knoll parents and students. You trusted our process. You worked with us during a difficult time and you had faith that we were doing what was right for your children. This year was not the smoothest year in BNI history, but I am confident that it was better because we as a BNI community stayed committed to our goal to keep our students safe, healthy, and engaged in quality learning while providing a sense of normalcy and community during a very difficult time. This goal was set at the beginning of the pandemic. This would not have been possible if it was not for the entire community's support, and for that, I am extremely grateful. At this time, I would like to invite up to the stage our class of 2021 salutatorian, Ms. Jacqueline Vasquez. friends that were able to make it today to today's celebration. Special welcome to those who are watching the live stream of this event. Thank you for celebrating with us from wherever you may be. Finally, I'd like to give congratulations to my peers who are graduating today. I'd like to take some time to say a few thank yous before I get started. First, I'd like to thank our principal, Mrs. Pastrick, our vice principal, Mr. Cavazos, and our president, Mr. Mullaney, for being the leaders of our school and ultimately making this whole ceremony possible. Without your leadership and guidance, this school year might have been completely different. So thank you for doing what you could to make this year both safe and as normal as possible. Next, I'd like to thank our chaplain, Father Kevin, and our bishop, Robert McClory for leading our faith community and for helping to provide a sense of certainty during these uncertain times. I'd also like to thank all of our teachers, staff, and administration for everything you've done these past years, but especially for all that you've done this year. This past school year has pushed many of us to our limits, and I'm glad that you all continue to do your best until the end. Special thank you to everyone who helped orchestrate this event and made it possible. My peers and I truly appreciate all of the hard work you have put into making this event a, su a success. Before I start my personal thank you, special shout out to Ms. B who has been helping Carmelina and I out with our speeches so that they are perfect for today. Your help was deeply appreciated. Now for my more personal thank yous. First and foremost, to my parents and sisters, thank you for always supporting me and pushing me to be my best. I know that this year has been equally hard for all of you as it has for me, but despite that, you still made me feel loved and celebrated all of my accomplishments that I've had this year. I love you guys, and I wouldn't be who I am without all of your love and support. To my family, who I hope are watching this right now, know that I always see all of your well wishes and messages of support on my mom's Facebook. Thank you for supporting me and hyping me up along the way. Your comments have always been appreciated. I love you all dearly, and if I haven't seen some of you recently, just know that I miss you tremendously. To my friends, I love you and I couldn't ask for better friends. Especially my girls, you know who you are. 
You ladies are going to do amazing things, and I'm so happy that you are a part of my life. Special thank you to my godparents, Manny and Jen. I really appreciate you guys always checking in on me and congratulating me on my successes. I love you both, and I'm so grateful to have you in my life. Finally, thank you to anybody else who has supported me in any way. I wanted to thank certain people by mentioning them, but just know that I appreciate all of the people in my life, even if I didn't mention you directly. To those here today and those watching from home, while many of us might be tired of hearing about COVID-19 and everything that comes along with it, and believe me, I am too, I feel it is extremely important that we don't brush aside what this past year has been like. Many of us had high hopes for our senior year. Senior year is supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be memorable. Or at least, that's what everyone says. From personal experience, this year has not been as easy and fun as, um, as some have said, and I'm sure many would agree. School is already hard enough when you have to juggle a multitude of things, such as your grades, personal life, sports, clubs, and job, all at once. Then when you add in the factor of constant worry about the health and safety of your friends, family, and yourself that COVID brings, the school year becomes even harder. Not including the fact that many of us, including myself, have had to deal with the loss of family and friends and the loss of opportunities and experiences that we won't get back. All this combined has made our final year of high school feel almost impossible to complete at times. When looking back at this past year, it's important that we acknowledge the hardships and losses we have faced because it makes those accomplishments and wins that we have had that much sweeter and memorable. At the start of this year, with many skeptical about how fall sports would work, seniors like Jake Wachinski didn't let current circumstances hold him back and went on to set the current record for most goals in no history with 108 goals. Others like Alejandra Castellanos and Carmelina Camiotti officially started their community outreach program to young women in the area through their Women Empowerment Club, taking time out of their busy schedules in order to give those around them lifelong lessons and guidance. <laughs> Abigail Kowalik made history by being one of Noel's first speakers to qualify for the National Speech Tournament. Rose Fuentes and Courtney Blakely were given the honor of being McDonald's All-American nominees, and both young women had numerous other individual successes this past season, too. <laughs> then there were others who started their own small businesses, like Miguel Mendoza, Jen Real, and Jasmine Rodriguez. Seniors like Olivia, Olivia Bachowski and Alejandra Rodriguez, along with several others who played an important role in the Drama Club's successful productions. And there were even more who obtained scholarships, got into prestigious schools, and did so many other amazing things. Despite everything that has happened this year, despite how most of us many times just wanted to give up and stop, so many of you continued to push through and managed to accomplish the unimaginable. Whether you had a small success, like getting a good test grade, or a large one, like some of the ones that I mentioned, all of those are amazing in their own way, especially when we take into consideration our circumstances. You should all be proud of what you have accomplished, and I hope that when you think of this year, that your memories and accomplishments are more memorable than they would have been in a regular year. Because truly, some of you have taken what would have been hard in normal, circumst normal circumstances and surpassed that. And to those of you who might feel like they haven't done anything special, being here today is proof enough that you have had at least one success, and that is enough even if others tell you otherwise. This kind of brings me to what I'd like to pass on to my fellow peers. You may have felt that you had to meet certain expectations, like you had to live your life a certain way, or that you had to do certain things to be successful or to make those around you proud. I'm here to tell you that you should live your life as your own. Now, I'm not saying you should do whatever the hell you want, but what I am saying is you shouldn't live a life you're not happy with. I know that with so many expectations and so much pressure, it's hard to do what you want, or what will make you happy because you don't want to disappoint those around you. You need to remember that this life is yours, not anybody else's. In the end, when all is said and done, you will be the one who has to accept the life you've lived. I hope that all of you, regardless of what you want to do with your life, personally and professionally, feel a sense of happiness and fulfillment in what you do. At the end of the day, putting yourself first and being happy with your life is what is most important. Those around you will be happy for you and proud of you when they realize that you are content with what you are doing. At the very least, allow yourself to have this. Do not allow yourself to feel regret. And if you haven't felt that way leading up until now, this is your sign to make change in your life and to try to find that happiness you want. Lastly, I have this for all of you here today. 
I couldn't let myself to talk to all of you without saying this. It would put me in a situation where I'd be going against my morals, and I, quite frankly, couldn't live with myself if I did that. Being on the speech team has taught me the importance of spreading your truth and how that is the first step to legitimate change. There are so many issues that plague our society that have reached an all-time high while we have been in high school. Issues such as systematic racism, hate crimes, police brutality, climate change, ignorance, violence, and many more are prevalent every single day and cannot and should not be ignored. We cannot turn a blind eye to these issues. If I had the time, I would sit here and list every single thing that needs to be fixed or reformed, but sadly, we would be here all day. All of you sitting here might feel like there's no way we can fix any of these things, but the fact of the matter is that we can. There is no limit to what you can do to enact change. To my peers, some of you might say that you are too young to do anything, but that is not true. My friend Davishi, who is also a part of the class of 2021, inspires me every single day when I see how committed she is as a climate activist. She does whatever she can to not only inform others about climate change, but also to take action to stop it. She takes action in the form of starting her own organization, which helps businesses be more sustainable, and has worked with other organizations to take action against climate change. She has done all of this and more, and she's the same age as many of us, as many of us here, 18. All of you graduating today, there is no difference between you and Davishi. You have accomplished the unimaginable during these challenging times. You have the capabilities to do amazing things. All of you can help to enact change too. There is nothing stopping you from doing so. You might have had the, pra the practice with this like I did while being on the speech team, but it doesn't take rocket science to do this. Doing small things like posting on social media and using your voice to spread information regarding these issues are things we can all do. Action and change would not be possible if we didn't first spread information and truths regarding these issues. This is why you need to do whatever you can to enact this first step to change. Even doing something simple, like listening to those who are affected by these issues, as opposed to talking over them, makes all the difference. And if possible, go above and beyond to bring that change to fruition. By taking more deci decisive action, such as peacefully protesting, voting, or taking another route to change. If there is one thing I can say that I am genuinely sure about, it is that all of you in the class of 2021 are passionate about the issues plaguing our society. We have to use that passion to start change and continue to fight for what's right. I wish all of you the best in your future endeavors, and I hope that you all live long, happy lives. Most importantly, I hope that you all take what I've said to heart so that things actually get done as we move into the future. Thank you. I would li now like to ask student representatives, Mr. Everett Lamberson, to the front. As seniors about to graduate, we often thought about all the hard days and long nights since freshman year that will lead up to this moment where we will walk across the stage in our final moments of being a high schooler. But this is not just a moment where we only address our own hard work. Let this be a moment where we think about those who have made us who we are, pushed us in the right direction, and tried their best to prepare us for what lies ahead. Let this be a moment where we acknowledge their hard work, not just paying tuition or helping you with homework, but those moments when we were down and desperately needed to be lifted up. Those moments where some, some of us needed a shoulder to cry on and an ear to listen, and they were there, there right with us. Especially in a time as hard as this past year, we saw livelihoods shattered and families shaken. Let's contemplate on all those sacrifices, hard work, and strength required of our parents to get us where we are right now. Even if it wasn't your parents who helped you become this grand version of yourself, going out into the world to find what your success is, think of that special person right now. Think about the love that went into this long journey. Think about everything you've been through together. Think about the circumstances that would be your life without them. I remember when I was younger, when my mom was laid off from her job in the makeup department of Macy's. I remember her calling our pastor crying and said she didn't know what she'd do or how she'd take care of us. Our car was repoed, but that didn't stop her from having faith and looking for a job every day. 
Eventually, she got a job at a small laundromat all the way across town. We didn't have a car, but my mom was determined to make a way no matter what. We walked every day, and I specifically remember there being stray dogs almost every time, but she never hesitated once to protect me, even when she was scared herself. She worked hard every day, and her determination to make a way for me made her seem to never be tired of working. That hard work paid off and got her an even better job and a place for me to go to school. When I was older, I faced a battle with depression, and there were moments where I didn't want to be here anymore. But she stayed by my side, and she gave me a reason to push on. I have worked endlessly so I could express how much I love her and appreciate everything she's done for me. I've had everything I could ever need because of her sacrifices. I may not know all of your stories, but coming from a single parent home, I now understand the power of a parent's love and the endless battles they are willing to fight for us. So to all the parents and the guardian angels that may not be our parents, thank you for your dedication, your love, your sacrifices, your wisdom, and most importantly, thank you for just being here with us and always by our side. We love you and thank you for being a part of this journey. Thank you. Now for our student representative, Ms. Ruby Mesa. Buenas tardes, padres y familias, y bienvenidos. Al fin ha llegado el día que esperábamos con tantas ansias. Hoy celebramos el éxito de nuestra clase, pero también es importante tomar un momento para reconocer a ustedes, nuestros padres y familias, a quienes les debemos este logro. Es importante reconocer a las personas que nos han ayudado a estar aquí hoy. Es gracias a su amor y apoyo que estamos aquí en este día tan jubiloso. Invito a mis compañeros a tomar un momento para pensar en las personas que han marcado nuestras vidas. Padres, abuelos, tíos, tías, padrinas, padrinos, quien quiera que sea. Porque como dice el dicho, se necesita todo un pueblo para crear un niño. Al terminar esta etapa de nuestras vidas, Les damos gracias por su apoyo, no tan solo los últimos cuatro años, pero también por todo lo que han hecho por nosotros desde pequeños. Nuestro agradecimiento va más allá de lo material, aunque claro que estamos agradecidos por ello. Nuestro agradecimiento se trata del apoyo incondicional. Ustedes fueron nuestros primeros maestros en casa. Hicieron su mejor esfuerzo para brindarnos ayuda. Estuvieron ahí en los momentos difíciles de pérdida y llenaron nuestras vidas con amor y felicidad. Siempre estuvieron a nuestro lado animándonos tal y como lo hacen hoy, ya sea en persona o a distancia. Durante los últimos dos años he competido en oratoria en interpretación de poesía. Se supone que estos programas de poesía se centran en un tema que es importante para la persona que los interpreta. Por lo tanto, mis programas siempre se han centrado en mi identidad como mexicana americana, el bingulismo y mi familia. A través de la poesía, siento que puedo expresar mi amor por mis padres y la cultura. Ellos no lo saben, pero les dediqué un programa de poesía a cada uno de ellos en el que expresé las formas en las que, han, en las que me han inspirado y formado mi identidad, y mi agradecimiento por ellos. Understanding, o comprensión, es el título del programa de poesía dedicado a mi mamá en el que expresé que tan importante es para mí poder hablar español para comunicarme con ella y, claro, la importancia de la comprensión. La brecha que existe entre los padres inmigrantes y sus hijos puede ser tan enorme porque no es solo un, una desconexión generacional que típicamente existe en la relación de padre e hijo, sino también es una brecha cultural y lingüística. Hablamos un idioma diferente. Crecimos en lo que parece ser otro mundo muy distinto al que ustedes crecieron. A pesar de esta brecha, quiero que sepan que no nos avergonzamos de ser hijos de padres hispanos. No nos avergonzamos de nuestras identidades, nuestra cultura o nuestro idioma. Y aunque tal vez sea difícil comunicarlo, agradecemos su presencia en nuestras vidas, sus sacrificios, su apoyo y su dedicación. Estamos orgullosos de quienes somos y por lo tanto estamos orgullosos de ustedes. Porque es gracias a nuestras familias que hemos crecido a las personas que hoy somos. Yo estaré eternamente agradecida por todo lo que mis, mis padres y las personas en mi vida han hecho por mí. Y por darme el privilegio de ser su hija 
y sé que todos sus hijos sienten lo mismo por ustedes, sus familias. Como símbolo de nuestro agradecimiento en este momento, me gustaría invitar a mis compañeros a mirar debajo de sus sillas y regalar las flores a nuestros padres. At this moment, I would like to invite my fellow graduates to look under their chairs and give our parents flowers as a symbol of our gratitude. Parents, thank you. This year, due to COVID and wanting to limit the number of people and many unforeseen circumstances, I am the commencement speaker. Now, I know you all were probably hoping for a famous actor or a comedian, a TikTok star, or somebody else other than the principal that you have seen every day in the school building. Sure, you might be right. She's not famous. And I do agree with you. I'm not that famous. But I do consider myself a local celebrity. I mean, after all, how many people in Northwest Indiana can say that they are the principal of the best private school in Northwest Indiana? <laughs> Needless to say, this opportunity to speak to the class of 2021 and close their senior year and enter their adult life is a very important moment in their life experience. I mean, we all know how important commencement speakers are. At our high school uh, commencement services, uh, their speeches were so good that every parent and every adult in the room took the commencement speaker's advice and wisdom, and it transformed their lives. Obviously, yes, in class of 2021, I'm kidding. Commencement speakers have the opportunity to impart a bit of wisdom and inspire individuals as they propel to a new beginning of their next chapter in life. After all, commencement does mean to begin. Class of 2021, how can me, this principal, who have you, spent, you have spent approximately 720 days with, 36 virtual due to COVID, impart such a grand wisdom to a group of 17 and 18 year olds that know it all, or at least think they do, and have experienced more than most 17 and 18 year olds do at this part in their life. I'm not sure, but I'm going to give it my best shot. In preparation for this speech, I reflected on what would I have wanted to hear at my graduation when I was 17 years old. What do I wish that people would have told me? 
How can I use this speech to motivate 95 students to move forward in life being the best version of themselves? I researched what great commencement speeches consisted of, and I listened to them, and I prayed that the Holy Spirit would instill in me the right words to inspire the class of 2021. All of the speeches focus on imparting life lessons through a series of personal experiences. So I said, all right, I have the framework for the most epic commencement speech that will shortly go virtual. I mean, viral. <laughs> now that I've provided all the context, it's time to commence. Class of 2021, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to think to yourself and about only yourself, to yourself. Where do you want to be 10 years from now? Think about what you want 10 years to look like for you. What will your faith life look like? What will your family look like? What will your career look like? Will you have a house? Will you live in an RV? Where do you want to be in 10 years? Class of 2021, open your eyes. Take out your best friend, your cell phone. Take out your cell phone. and take a picture of yourself, just yourself. There you go, Mary, get that good angle. <laughs> take that picture. As you close your eyes, every moment of the class of 2021 had a different image, every single one of you. Some of you foresee yourself with a family and kids, other running a small independent business, others working in a science lab creating cures. Some might see themselves in a school, working at the mills, or serving our country. No matter what you see, I'm here to tell you that whatever you imagine for yourself in 10 years is attainable if you plan accordingly. I'm not telling you this because as a principal, I think you need goals. I'm telling you this because that is exactly what I did to get where I am currently at. Many of you might be like, Mrs. Pastrick, you're just the principal of a school. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am principal of my alma mater. I am principal of the best private school in Northwest Indiana, and I have the opportunity to change lives every single day. I am exactly where I want to be. When I went to IU as a freshman, I created a vision board for myself. I cut pictures of my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband, the house I wanted, the family I aspired to have, and the job I wanted. The vision board was my reminder of what I wanted myself to be in the future. I used this image to remind myself that all my decisions had to move me closer to that vision. Whatever you aspire to be in 10 years, lay it out and make daily decisions to get yourself there. It really isn't that complicated. It's really that easy. Have a vision, lay out a plan, and make your vision your reality. Plan. You see, crew? The Lord had a vision. He painted you into the perfect masterpiece that you are. Now you must take that brush and paint your future. Paint it intentionally. Ask yourself what is important to you and what you hope for you and your family's future family's future. Keep this in mind and begin to have a vision for yourself vision or dreams, whatever you want to call them, they are beautiful. But 
as I always used to tell my students when I was a teacher, a dream is just that. A dream is nothing without action. In order to reach your goals, you've got to work. Work. I came from a large family and we didn't have much money. Although we were not raised with much money, we were raised with hard working role models in both my parents. My father, a young entrepreneur that came from Mexico, and my mother, a factory worker who came to the United States at the age of 13, all by herself. At, the age of, at, at a young age, my parents instilled in me and my siblings that there is nothing that you can't achieve through hard work and perseverance. You can accomplish anything. My parents wouldn't just say work hard, they made us work hard. The lesson of hard work often seems lost in today's society. Many of us are looking for the easiest way to get what we want. We fail to put forth the effort and energy necessary to achieve our goals. Sure, some people fall into good fortune or good career path, but the large majority of us have gotten where we are because we have worked for it. If you saw a beautiful vision for yourself, work for it. Don't expect anybody to hand it to you. Grit is the single most important indicator of success. Eliminate excuses. In an effort to give you the formula for life success, I have mentioned vision, plan, work. Now comes the hard part. You will fail. At some point in all of our adult lives, we have encountered failure. As a young professional, I was fired for my first job. Yup, good old Ms. Patrick was fired for not meeting my boss's expectations. Now don't get me wrong, at the first I was a bit sour, like, oh, she just didn't want me because she felt threatened by me, or she's just not a good boss. After being fired, I reflected on my performance and realized that it wasn't my boss's fault, that it was my fault. I failed to meet her expectations and I failed to do what was asked of me. I should have been fired. Now that was a hard pill to swallow, but a necessary pill for me. When one fails, it's easiest to make excuses. But my life formula says, eliminate excuses. Acknowledge your shortcomings and adjust so you don't fail again. This one is easily the hardest step of the formula. Many of you have life circumstances that, could, that you could have used as an excuse to not make it here today, but you didn't. You used your experience, what sometimes may have been difficult life circumstances to strengthen your will to succeed. Gratitude. In my life, I have always felt the most important piece of my life formula is gratitude. After you have accomplished something, relish in it, enjoy it, and then give gratitude for it. Once you have laid your vision, you have a plan, you've worked, you've eliminated those excuses, you have accomplished your goal, the final step of accomplishment is to give gratitude for those who have helped you achieve it. This is the easiest step of the entire process. Give thanks and glory to God for giving you the vision, the plan, the grit, and the discipline to meet your goal. Class of 2021, take out your phone. Look up your last picture. Look at that person and realize that that person in that image is the only person who can set your 10 year vision and plan into motion. And that through hard work and the elimination of excuses, you will attain your vision and be in deep gratitude to those who have supported you and loved you throughout the way. Class of 2021, it's time to commence your 10 year vision. Thank you, I love you, and God bless.
Now it's the time you've all been waiting for. I will invite the graduates of the class of 2021 to receive their Bishop Knoll diplomas. Out of respect for every family and student present, I politely ask that you hold your applause until all graduates have received their diplomas. Every family and student deserves to hear their, name, their student's name and their accomplishments. So please be respectful to all those around you. In addition, please do not approach the stage with any flash photography, as students are already going to be professionally photographed. Now I would like to invite Ms. Patricia Aguila Castellanos to the stage to present the 2021 graduates. Bethany September Askew, Valparaiso University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Olivia Clara Buchkowski, DePaul University, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Mariana Bautista, Purdue University Northwest 440 Diploma, Cum Laude. Michael Angelo Benavente, Purdue University Northwest 440 Diploma. Savannah Marie Benitez, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Elena Biro, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Courtney Alicia Blakely, Middle Tennessee State University, Academic Honors Diploma, Mary, Mar Mary Magna Cum Laude. Martin J. Brown, Barber School, Core 40 Diploma. Mary Phyllis Buxa, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Mary Lois Burke, St. Mary's College, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Alejandra Olivia Castellanos, Loyola University Chicago, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Diana Victoria Cañon, Core 40 Diploma. Armando Chavez, Indiana University Bloomington, 440 Diploma. John Xavier Colon, Trade School, 440 Diploma. Aiden Christopher Companion, Purdue University Fort Wayne, 440 Diploma. Itzali Concha, Purdue University Northwest, 440 Diploma. Isabelli Anastasia Damasio, University of St. Francis, Fort Wayne, 440 Diploma, Cum Laude. 
Isaac John De Silva, Ivy Tech Community College, Bloomington, 440 Diploma. Jada Payton Davis, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, 440 Diploma, Cum Laude. Melly Diaz, Tricochi University, 440 Diploma. Gianna Eloise DeSera, Purdue University Northwest, 440 Diploma. Amari Fallon, Illinois Wesleyan University, 440 Diploma. Matthew E. Fedler, Trade School, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Ariana Elise Pereira, Purdue University West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Carlos Figueroa, Purdue University Fort Wayne, 440 Diploma. Bianca Alicia Flores, Indiana University Bloomington, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Michaela Rose Fuentes, Cochise College, 440 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Adam Luis Galvan, Ivy Tech Community College, 440 Diploma. Angel Bernardo Garcia, Purdue University Northwest, ROTC, 440 Diploma. Kaylin Marie Green, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Ariana Guerrero, Purdue University Northwest, 440 Diploma. Alondra Giselle Guzman, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, 440 Diploma, Cum Laude. Caitlin Mullen Savannah Hampton, Ball State University, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Thank you. Carissa Alexandra Hernandez, University of Illinois Chicago, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Marlene Sarai Hernandez, Indiana University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Salome Amalia Hernandez, Bethel University, 440 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Rebecca Anel Herrera, Ball State University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Jose Damian Hurtado Moreno, Trade School, 440 Diploma. Brianna Giselle Ibarra, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Victoria Lynn Jaroski, Harold Washington University College, 440 Diploma, Cum Laude. Abigail Ann Kowalik, St. Mary's College, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Carmelina Antonia Camiati, University of Notre Dame, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Everett Charles Desmond Lamberson, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Yeah. 
Dimitri Christopher Lopez, Valparaiso University Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Esmeralda Mela Lopez, Ball State University Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. Lusaura Mendoza, American Academy of Art, Core 40, Cum Laude. Miguel Mendoza, Indiana University Bloomington, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Ruby Mesa, St. Mary's College, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Andrea Middleton, Indiana University Northwest, 440 Diploma Cum Laude. Gwendolyn Anastasia Miss, Purdue University Northwest, 440 Diploma Cum Laude. Savannah Charmika Kelly Murray, Purdue University Northwest, 440 Diploma. Gabriel Nunes, Purdue University West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Jonathan Orozco, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Fallon Margaret Alicia Peña, Valparaiso University, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Nina Qureshi, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Angela Ramirez, Ivy Tech Community College, 440 Diploma. Francis Ann Ramirez, Indiana University Northwest, 440 Diploma. Natalie Georgina Ramirez, Indiana University Northwest. 440 Diploma, Cum Laude. Fernando Ramos, Indiana University Northwest, 440 Diploma. Jennifer Alexa Real, South Suburban College, 440 Diploma. Noah Alexander Reed, Loris College, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Riley Ann Reed, Indiana University Bloomington, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Samuel Edward Eugene Repay, Purdue University Northwest, 440 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Ariel Danae Rios, Western Illinois University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Kiara Julianis Rivera del Valle, United States National Guard, 440 Diploma. <laughs> Aislinn Simone Rogers, Indiana University Bloomington, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Alejandro Rodriguez, Purdue University West Lafayette, 440 Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. David Armando Rodriguez, Purdue University Northwest, 440 Diploma. Giselle Rodriguez, United States Army, 440 Diploma. Raymond Rodriguez, Indiana University Northwest, 440 Diploma.
Hazmin Guadalupe Rodriguez Alvarez, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Tamia Ashanti Rollins, Indian Anna State University, 440 Diploma. Yesenia Alia Roman, Indian University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Jasmine Romo, Ball State University, 440 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Jose Manuel Salas, Ivy Tech Community College, 440 Diploma. Leilani Teresa Sanchez, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Emma Marie Short, Indiana University, Bloomington, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Burdell Smith III, Ivy Tech Community College, 440 Diploma. Nicodemus Soko, Purdue University Northwest, 440 Diploma. <laughs> Jessica Beatriz Soto, Purdue University Northwest, 440 Diploma, Cum Laude. <laughs> Jose Soto Lozano, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, 440 Diploma, Cum Laude. Jose Alejandro Suarez, Jr., Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, 440 Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Araya Marie Taylor, Texas Southern University, 440 Diploma. Cecilia Tenoco, Indiana University, Northwest, 440 Diploma, Cum Laude. Eduardo Alejandro Torres Cruz, Purdue University, West Lafayette, 440 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Angel Jesus Trejo, Indiana University Northwest, 440 Diploma, Cum Laude. Andrew Nicholas Vasquez, Macaulay Real Estate School, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Jacqueline Vasquez, Boston University, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Diego Armando Villanueva Nunes, Purdue University Northwest, 440 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Jacob Thomas Wichlitsky, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Amaya Desiree Wilson, Indiana State University, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Sydney Deanna Wilson, Morton Community College, 440 Diploma. Bruno Zamora, Wabash College, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Catherine Glenn Saragossa, Illinois State University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Dominic Alexander Ziobro, Trade School, 440 Diploma, Cum Laude.
Class of 2021, I leave you with a short but appropriate passage from the Bible. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not only on your own understanding and all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Faculty, staff, friends, I proudly present to you the class of 2021. Class of 2021, please remove your tassel. Thank you, you may sit. With great joy in my heart, I now call up the class of 2021, class valedictorian, Ms. Carmelina Camiati. Thank you, Ms. Patrick. Hi, everybody. Okay. Let me begin with a large and sincere congratulations to the class of 2021. Your hard work, dedication, and commitment to your own success have gotten you to this accomplishment, to this moment of satisfaction, to this celebration of the person you have proven yourself to be. So savor this moment. We all deserve it. Now, it's very true that our class's journey to get to this point has been unlike any other classes. But all the challenges of this year have only made this accomplishment more meaningful, more joyful, and more hopeful. We got through an entire school year during a pandemic, and I would not do this class justice if I failed to mention the challenges and losses that many here have had to overcome to get to graduation. But despite everything stacked against us this year, we have persevered to get to this point. On that note, I would like to take one second to sincerely thank the administrative team who made this year possible. None of us knew exactly what to expect from this school year, but thanks to your hard work and dedication, we were able to have a somewhat normal senior year, which is actually quite remarkable. So we thank you sincerely. We truly appreciate everything you have ever done for us. I would also like to thank all the teachers who have risen to the challenge of hybrid learning. Your persistent commitment to your students has led to the numerous accomplishments of this class. So we thank you for your never-ending support, guidance, and friendship. Lastly, I would like to thank all the families watching today. It is all because of your love, encouragement, and guidance that we have gotten to this accomplishment. To my parents, thank you for making this possible. Mom, thank you for always being my biggest cheerleader, my best role model, and my strongest source of inspiration. I would not be here anywhere without you. And thank you to my brothers for showing me how to get here and always pushing me by your examples and friendship. Some of you may know that both of my older brothers were also valedictorians of their classes here at Bishop Mill. So despite having two wonderful examples of a perfect graduation speech, I still struggle to know exactly what to say to you all, my fellow graduates. With people in and out of the building, the cancellation of masses, dances, and games, and the overall buzzkill of social distancing, it's hard to it has been hard to feel the same sense of senior class unity that most graduating classes get to enjoy all year. This is actually the first time all year that our entire class has been in the same place at the same time. So what do I say to compliment and encourage a class that has not gotten the chance to be a class in over a year? What do you say to encourage or inspire someone who has just experienced a year full of disappointment and loss? Well, the unsurprising answer is that I don't know. I don't have the answers or any groundbreaking conclusion, and I really don't know exactly what it is this class needs to hear in this moment. But what I do know is that looking at all we've already overcome in our short lives, I find it hard to imagine what we can't. I do know that despite the challenges of this year, these past four years have been so meaningful and memorable to me, thanks to all the incredible people in this room and especially the members of this class. We have had a crooked path to graduation, but I, for one, am extremely proud to have shared the past four years with you all. There's no doubt in my mind that each person here is capable of overcoming and achieving anything they set their mind to. And that is not just a superficial compliment, it is solely an accurate reflection of the character of this class. Our class came to Bishop Knoll four long years ago. Some of us thought we knew what high school was going to be like and were excited. Others, like myself, were scared and nervous. But we all quickly got our footing and gained a good reputation as a class. 
We walked the same halls, went to the same classes, made new friends, and eventually became family. That year, we lost sophomore Alicia Casares, and we saw how Bishop Null grieved as a family. Through that shared grief, we learned what it means to be a warrior, what it means to be strong, and what it really means to be a family. I'm sure you all here remember that as freshmen, we were Ms. Albrecht's first STEM class and Ms. Fredrickson's first ever high school theology class. Now, coming full circle, Ms. Albrecht's STEM program has grown into the award-winning award stream lab in four new classes, and Ms. Fredrickson is leaving Knoll for the principalship at St. John Evangelist. And it's not that we take credit for either of those things, but it is apparent that the character of this class has helped Bishop Knoll become a better, more successful place. So moving on to our sophomore year, for many of us, the best moment of the year was seeing the boys' soccer team win the program's first ever state title. That rainy October night, all of us packed into those buses and drove down to Indianapolis. And as it turned out, our student section was about three times the size of the other teams, which was especially notable considering their, their school was just three miles from the stadium. Not to mention that now graduates Bruno Zamora and Jake Wachlinski were responsible for the game-winning goal. Looking back on the excitement and the triumph of that soccer game, we remember how powerful this school, this community, and this class really is. Also, our sophomore year, now graduate Natalie Ramirez became the very first female athlete to qualify for the state championship wrestling tournament. And then sophomores Courtney Blakely, Michaela Fuentes, and Isabella, Isabella Damasio led the girls' basketball team to their second consecutive sectional championship. Again, we proved that our class reserves a special place in Bishop Knowles' history. Now, for many of us, junior year was a challenge. We were stretched thin between sports, extracurriculars, and more demanding classes. It was definitely hard, and the year came with lots of stress and marks on Ali's pride chart, but also with a new sense of fulfillment and assurance. Then, on that Friday, the 13th of March, 2020, everything came to a pause. We were sent home on an early spring break that turned into the rest of the school year. Our teachers had to transition to virtual learning, and we had to adapt to a new way of doing things. Both students and teachers were thrown into something they did not sign up for, and we really tested the limits of what it means to be warrior strong. But nonetheless, we got through it together. When many of us felt isolated, alone, and close to giving up, this community still came together in a special way through chapels, good news segments, trivia nights, and Divine Mercy chaplets. With this support from the school, we historically finished our junior year from home. Then, after a summer of COVID restrictions, many of us were able to come back to the building for our senior year. And while this year has not been traditional, we have made the best of it. With the stress of applying to college and planning our futures, we still managed to excel as a class. Abigail Kowalik and Jackie Vasquez became Bishop Knoll's first ever speakers to be named NSDA Academic All-Americans. Noah Reed, Michaela Fuentes, Bruno Zamora, and Courtney Blakely, and Salome Hernandez all accepted offers to continue their athletic careers in college. And members of this class have been crucial in the success of this year's drama department, band, tutoring program, student athletic training program, science Olympiad team, campus ministry, video game club, speech and debate team, and biology club. This class has really made an impact here at Bishop Knoll, and our footprints, along with the footprints, along with the legacies of past classes, make up the distinct character of this school. As we look back on the legacy that we leave behind here at Bishop Knoll, we are reminded of all the memories, lessons, challenges, and relationships that have shaped us into the people we are today. Graduating today commemorates not only what you have done in the classroom, but it celebrates everything these past four years have meant for you. We celebrate all the growth that has taken place between these walls, and we look forward to the future where we can use what we have learned here to make our impact on the world in a true warrior fashion. I would like to share just one lesson that I have learned over the course of my education. Like many others here, I have gone to Catholic school my entire life. And the one thing that has been so apparent in every aspect of my education is the belief that your life is not about you. Your life is not about money or success or prestige or even legacy or duty. It is about using what you have to move things forward. It is about serving others. It is about making the world a better place. All the opportunities, privileges, gifts, abilities, and positions we have, we were given for us to use. And it is our responsibility and our purpose here on earth to do so. I have learned that being successful means serving others and doing the right thing even when it's hard. It means advocating for change where it's needed and doing everything you can to impact the people and the community around you. I believe that if you do everything in life with a sense of purpose and meaning, you will be successful because you will know that being truly successful means being impactful. 
Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. I am confident that every member of this class knows what it means to have a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love because that is something we learned and demonstrated here at Bishop Milk. So take that with you and remember that there is good to be done in every corner of the world. Wherever you go and whatever you end up doing, there will always be opportunities to be kind, to educate others, to improve a community or business, to give someone an opportunity, or to simply make someone's life easier. The world changes one small deed at a time. So no matter what kind of life you build for yourself, you will always have the chance to make this world kinder, more compassionate, and more understanding. So as we all open the next chapter of our lives, I urge you to keep that question of impact and purpose in your mind, and always look for how you can use your privileges and opportunities to enact positive change. Right now, our country is in desperate need of positive change. The entire time we have been in high school, the country has been experiencing an ever-growing division, division that has been fueled by hatefulness and ignorance. In the past year, the country has faced racial unrest over police brutality, systemic racism, and discrimination and political unrest over a contentious election that ended with an attack on the U.S. Capitol, which for many felt like an attack on the very principles for which our democracy stands. Everywhere we look, there seems to be another example of the ignorance and hatefulness that prevents us from moving forward. But I am here to remind you that even though it's unoriginal and somewhat cliche, we can be the change. Our generation and our collective voice is powerful. It is our job to demand better from society. It is our responsibility to demand respect and dignity for all people and for our planet. It is our purpose to use our privilege, our education, our voice, and our vote to do what is right. We decide what is acceptable. Our generation has the power and the position to set a new standard for what is right and what is wrong. And it's true that change does not happen overnight, but it does start right here. It starts with us deciding what is and is not acceptable. Hatefulness and ignorance are not acceptable and it is our responsibility to fight for the world we want to live in. So use everything you have to inspire change and to make a difference in the world around you. Do it loudly, do it boldly, and do it with purpose. Our collective purpose is so much larger than our individual fears, so don't let anything stand between you and where you are called to be. You owe it to yourself to do the things you think you cannot do, and you owe it to God and to the world to do it all with purpose. So be unforgettable. Be someone who inspires others. Be so good that you make others better and be a force for change. Do it with purpose and always believe in, your, in others, believe in yourself, and believe in the beauty of your dreams. And never forget what it means to be a warrior. Never forget the memories we have made and the lessons we have learned. I have so much gratitude and respect for everyone in this class and all the teachers and staff in this building. Thank you all for making this school feel like a home. This is a family that will never be forgotten. Thank you so much and congratulations to the class of 2021. I now ask Bishop Knoll President, Mr. Paul Mullaney, to come to the front. Thank you, Mrs. Pastrick. So to the awesome class of 2021, the class that triumphed over pandemic and earned diplomas in our school's 100th year, I have the distinguished privilege tonight of welcoming you, in, welcoming you into the ranks of Bishop Knoll Institute alumni. I welcome each of you into this special association of more than 21,000 sisters and brothers who have graduated from this truly special place. You'll be amazed in your future endeavors and your travels. The number of times you will meet Bishop Knoll graduates when you least expect it. We are all over the place. In fact, I know among your parents, siblings, and relatives tonight, there are a number of our alumni in attendance. And if I may ask, would all of our Bishop Knoll alumni or Catholic Central alumni who are in attendance please stand and be recognized? Thank you. 
These special people, all of our BNI alumni, are making a difference day in and day out in their families, in their parishes, their communities, in their fields of work, and in the world. And they've been doing it for a century. They have been, and now you as well will forever be known as BNI warriors. Nobody can take that away from you. So as you go forward in all that you do, remember that you are the warrior. And in all honesty, I was a little worried listening this morning to Bishop McClory's homily that I was going to be scooped in what I was going to say tonight, but I think we're still good, so here it is. The dictionary tells us that a warrior is one prepared to go to war with great vigor and courage in pursuit of a de desired outcome. My hope and prayer for each of you is that you will remain warriors for what is important. Warriors for peace, warriors for social justice, warriors for the sanctity of life, warriors for living the gospel message, warriors for whatever it is that will help make for a more cohesive family, a stronger community, a better world. Also, remember that this is your home, and we are family. So please come home and visit, just not right away. Anyway, until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Congratulations, thank you, and God bless you. And now to wrap up our celebration tonight, I'd like to reintroduce our beloved campus minister, Stacia Bolakowski, Miss B, for our benediction. Unfortunately, Father Kevin could not be here tonight, so it is my honor to offer the benediction. I invite everyone to please rise. And since I am qualified, but not fully qualified to extend a blessing, we all are. Uh, the church calls us as parents, mentors, and faculty um, to bless our children at every opportunity. And so I ask all the parents, mentors, friends to please raise their hands like this over our graduates. Graduates, I ask you to bow your heads. As your classes and grading are now complete, may you strive toward excellence in all you do. As the speeches conclude, may your voices rise up to pronounce justice and peace in the world. As the fanfares cease, may you sing of joy even in the dark and lonely places. As the applause quiets, may you celebrate and lift up those around you. And as you have graduated today, we hope that your achievements grow and cause growth in your communities. And may we all know of the overwhelming blessings of the one who created all things. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bishop Noel, family and community, the class of 2021.